everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making chicken with green onions, otherwise known as chicken shiodari. So if you guys like to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Now don't let the list of ingredients here scare you off at all. This is very, very easy and simple to make so you guys will not regret this. The portions that I am making is for about four to six people. So if you want to do less than that, obviously just cut the ingredients down in half. I do have four large green onions. These are like really thick and you'll see. Like I'm just going to end up chopping these up and we want to cut these up into small pieces because we're going to spread this all over just like you saw on the picture. It doesn't really matter if your green onions are thinner. Just go ahead and grab a couple pieces more. And all we're going to do is cut these up into pieces. As you see my thicker ones are a little bit too thick so I'm just going to slice these right in half with all the thicker chunks. If you guys don't have that problem, don't worry about it. It's just mine are just that thick. Because I have so many green onions, I'm going to go ahead and just grab chunks of them and then cut these up or chop these up into smaller pieces. My thicker chunks here, I want you guys to see that you don't want to have kitchen injuries again. So turn these around where the round side is on the bottom and the flatter side is on the top. So this way it's easier to slice through. Just like with a tomato or bell pepper, you would cut from the inside. That's exactly what we're going to do here with the thicker pieces or the inside of the wider part of the green onions. With the amount of green onions that I had, I ended up with a little bit over one full cup of this pack and I'm okay with that because it's delicious. Now grab your ginger and go ahead and start peeling it and you know how you would use a spoon or as for me, I'm using a knife and I'm just gonna scrape off the outside skin of the ginger layer. Use whatever you feel safest with and don't hurt yourself doing this part. Let me tell you a little bit about my ginger here. I keep it in the freezer in little chunks because you generally don't need a lot of ginger all at once unless you're making a huge batch of something that requires it, but nothing really actually requires it that often. So I just have little chunks of it that you would normally use when you cook with and then keep it in the freezer, like I said. So pop that right back in and then let's go ahead and move on to our ginger again. Now rather than trying to mince it up all at once, just do like I've been doing in the past if you guys have been following along with me, smash it a little bit just to break it up and then you'll be able to cut through a lot easier without having the, like, the little pieces of skin and whatever the roots inside of it. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? If you cook enough you kind of get it, right? But just mince away. We'll be using that in just a little bit. Okay, moving right along. On to our chicken. The original recipe actually calls for chicken neck meat. Uh, that's pretty hard to find. And just don't want to do that much work to pull off a little bit of meat off the neck and so I am using chicken breast. I have made this recipe before and it turned out wonderfully so actually there's a few things I did a little bit more. Well, actually one thing that I did differently but that's it. But chicken breast or chicken thigh would work really well with this recipe. As you just saw I removed all of my fat and now I'm going to cut these into thin slices. Now here's the little thing that I need you guys to kind of notice and see moving a little bit faster I'm going to show it at a different angle in just a little bit but I am angling from the top and then the bottom. Can you guys see that? And then it's going to adjust in just a second. Right, so I've adjusted it so you guys can kind of see it better in the camera here. But you see I'm kind of cutting from the top half and then I'm going to cut from the bottom half right here. Well top half again and then bottom half. Notice that? And these chickens again are slightly frozen so that's easier for me to have better control while I'm slicing these. So top half, bottom half, do it for all of your chicken and then cut anything that is a little bit too large and actually I went ahead and just rough chopped the rest of this because if you think about it the chicken neck meat would have been really small tiny pieces right? And that's kind of the effect that we're going for. So I'm just going to do this in every which way direction, no rhyme or reason in this. Do it however you'd like going across, diagonally, whatever it is, and then we'll be done with our chicken and get ready to cook it just a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and get our pan out and turn your heat up to a high heat setting. We're gonna go ahead and add our cooking oil right into the pan. Once your pan is hot enough, you'll notice that you'll be able to move the oil around in your pan easily so that you know that your chicken pieces are not going to stick to the bottom of your frying pan. Now go ahead and grab all the chicken that we just chopped up and pour that right into the pan. We're going to cook the chicken all the way through, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, about two pieces of 
minced garlic and throw that right into the pan. Now, not all recipes actually call for the garlic. I have had it plain before, how the original recipe calls for, and it was a little, a little bit too plain for me. But there is a reason why I'm doing this. I am doing this because my kids didn't like the green onions before, so I wanted to give them some flavor in the chicken, which is why I added the garlic with the chicken while I am cooking it. They love the chicken. I don't know, I didn't even taste it just by itself with the garlic, but they loved it and they were happy with it. So whatever works is a win with the kids. Now I am speeding up the video because the chicken does take a, I don't know, about five, seven minutes or so to cook because they are in smaller pieces and this is a larger pan. So it does cook faster, but you just want to make sure it's thoroughly cooked through because it's chicken. You don't want to eat raw chicken, or at least I don't. So go ahead and make sure your chicken is entirely cooked through and take your time doing this part. And as fast as the video is moving, if you can tell, I am trying to chop up or break up the chicken pieces while I am cooking it. Now, once your chicken is thoroughly cooked through, go ahead and place the chicken aside in your bowl, in your plate, wherever it is that you're gonna serve it, because we're not gonna do anything else with the chicken from this point. But what I wanted to add was to leave the chicken juices behind, because we're gonna make our sauce with this. Make sure you use a slotted spoon or just tilt the pan or whatever it is that works for you to get the chicken out without losing too much of anything that's left in the pan, the chicken juices, the flavor that we're gonna need. Using sake and mirin, make sure you guys are using the sake and the mirin in the right portions because I've got a tablespoon of sake and a teaspoon of mirin, well, actually two and two for each of those. And then add the rest of your ingredients. Now, I didn't have any of the tashi that the ingredients called for, so I went ahead and used chicken stock in mine. But I didn't have the powder, I only had the bouillon cubes, and so I went ahead and just kind of scraped some off because those are supposed to be a little bit more potent. And so I did that and it's worked out fine and we're going to cook this until it dissolves and you'll see that it dissolved and you want to reduce it until it's half like you see. In this order we are going to do the ginger, then our green onions, and then our tablespoon of sesame oil right on top of that. And we're going to cook this for about one to two minutes just enough to get it fragrant and your green onions are still nice and green. Stir it up and go ahead and get ready to plate this because we are done. That is it. We are eating ours over rice, so this is how I've plated it just for you. Without the rice in the picture, I did go ahead and just place this in a bowl with my green onions right on top. It has a lot of flavor in there. It is absolutely delicious. It's not super salty, and if it, even if it is, you can eat it with the rice, and obviously that'll just help with the flavor of all of it. If you guys like this video, please hit that subscribe button, like it and share it, and until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.